learned a long time ago from a very astute person in the market. And he said, if you love a stock and you really know the fundamentals, if it goes down, not that you want it, if it goes down 50 percent, you should love it twice as much. And that concept has stuck with me for a long time. If you have a company that you really like or that you know, uh, I certainly would not be afraid about dips. But I think for the moment in this very volatile market, I would be staying very calm and not doing anything, frankly. But I think the opportunities are going to be here. The, we've been there. If you saw the New York Times last week, they had this incredible graph of the last 10 years of stocks. And it went just like this. And it, then the, at the last four days were like so small. And it was in the context of a 10-year cycle of ups and downs. You know, this is a blip. And we've seen a lot of blips in the last 10, 20 years. What's it done to, to your uh, market, venture capital, private equity? Do, do you get to see lots of opportunities to buy companies? Uh, are they strongly correlated to what's happened in the broader indices or not really? Well, we're investing in the young companies. When it's not correlated. It's interesting, the companies you put up there before of ours, Wondries in the podcast business, the Skim and Axios, everybody, everybody keeps reading every day. Companies like that do well. Companies that relate to staying at home and not having to go and travel, uh, I, I think, are going to do fine uh, in spite of this blip. But I think we should get overly nervous by what's happening, although no one likes to see declines like we're seeing. But when you're seeing volatile markets up a thousand, down a thousand, the best thing to do is just to keep your money, hands in your pockets for a while. You say it's a blip. I mean, why are you so confident that this couldn't be or cause a more prolonged economic downturn? Listen, I, I saw the 70s, I saw the 87 blip, I saw the 90s. There's always something that dramatically happens. And I think we're going through, this is, a, this is a serious, there's no question about it. But I think that, you know, if you hold on to good fundamental stocks, I certainly haven't sold any stock I own in the last several weeks. So what are you looking for to get more confident? I understand you're, you want to buy, but you're not right now. So what no. will it take for you to buy? I think we need to see things settle down. I think what's happening in the political season uh, picture is kind of, I think, will help. I think once that stabilizes and we've got a more normal environment, uh, which I think we're headed into, I think that's going to be a stabilizing force. And I, I just think uh, general economics in terms of what, you know, fun, fun, thank God, most companies, most major companies are, have, are in good financial shape. And that's a very important fundamental. We didn't see that in 2008 because there were some really bad balance sheets around. I, I know you focus more on, on the earlier stage yeah. companies. Yeah. But you, you know tech incredibly well. Did, did you think that tech stocks had got a little bit overstretched to the upside coming into this? And, and in that sense, is, is the pullback we've seen actually quite understandable? Well, I think you would have had that kind of a, a, some modest pullback no matter what because things had gotten ahead of themselves. And I think we are going to be going into a, uh, an environment of uh, anti-competitiveness. Anti I think we're going to see the Googles and the Facebooks. There's going to be a lot of congressional scrutiny. And I think uh, where those companies stand vis-a-vis -vis all the other smaller companies are going to, is going to be seriously considered by the Congress and also by the public. And, probably during this election cycle. Hey, Alan, uh, venture firm Sequoia, one of your competitors, sent out a, an email, I guess, warning some of its founders and CEOs of a worsening economic condition and having them start to ask questions about COVID-19, about headcount, uh, about being thrifty with marketing expenses. I have to smile because, and I, I'm not at all critical of that statement, but I remember very clearly I can't remember what year it was that Sequoia put out the same kind of letter. You should go check in. 2008, it. RIP, good <laughs> Yeah, they did exactly the same thing. But we all say to well, our it turns companies. turns out in 2008, that was a prudent yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, to do right that. now, you should be well, make sure your balance sheet's in good shape, have cash in the bank, and keep your headcount tight. Uh, but I think you have to look on a long range basis. I think what they're saying is, Anyone who's a rational business person wants to uh, make sure their house is in order. And but it not sounds just like you're not sending that to your companies at Graycroft. Well, yeah, we're saying that to them every day. We didn't just all of a sudden say the last week, but yes, we would reinforce it. Make sure you've gotten your course of control because <coughs> everybody is feeling the after effect of this. Except I heard peanut butter sales. <laughs> uh, do, do you think that uh, it's going to be hard to? Get, exit any of your current early stage investments via IPO for the rest of this year because of the current environment? I, I think for the near term, I would 
think IPOs depend on market windows. I don't. I, I said this, I think, on this program a few months ago. You know, people try to catch a window when it opens. I don't. The window hasn't opened the last couple of months. I don't see it opening here in the next three months. We've got to get through a much more settled uh, period. I mean, you can do lots of quiet filings, but I, I think to come out into this environment, you got to. Got him pretty gutsy. M and A as well. Any exits uh, by by M and A? Do you think also going to be put off for, for quite some time? Well, we have, uh, without naming them, we have a half a dozen that are in process. I haven't heard anything, uh, certainly in the last week, that uh, would indicate they may not be, that they shouldn't continue, and they're at, you know, prices that are uh, appropriate, and we. Uh, we have every confidence they're going to be completed. Sorry, Alan, just reading through the Sequoia Post, they're calling it the black swan of 2020. You think they're too worried? No, I don't. I, listen, this is a, this is a, you know, it's been described as a pandemic. I mean, this is, you know, I, I just heard, it's only a rumor and I'm not saying it's true, but some universities are saying the kids don't go home for college, don't go home for spring break, stay in place because people are trying to, you know, contain everything where it is. And I think meetings are being canceled, and this is going to affect, you know, the travel companies. It's going to affect everybody. Uh, fortunately, our younger companies are in such a high growth mode that maybe instead of going 100, growing 100 percent, they'll only grow 50 percent, 60 percent. But uh, as long as they've got their... But that's uh, not a blip. I mean, you, you said it was a blip in the market. Well, what I meant is that I don't see this being the next year going straight down. I mean, I don't, I just don't see it. I mean, I think we're going through a period of time and we're going to go through an adjustment. And uh, uh, this is good. I would, I, I'm not in a, a, a health expert, but I would say we're going to see a settle, this thing settle down probably the next two, three, four months, whatever it will take. And after then, we'll see a recovery. And we'll be sitting here a few months from now and uh, and, and watching people getting themselves back in shape. In the meantime, it's uncomfortable. It's no fun.